Good evening and welcome to Pearls with Veronica, episode three. I'm your host, Veronica Brown on Positive Power 21 Christian Media. Tonight is I have a very special guest, my youngest daughter, Olivia Brown. She will be giving insight on grief by my daughter's heart. Olivia, are you on? Hi, yes. Good evening. Welcome, and thank you for participating tonight. Tell us about yourself, Olivia. Um, I'm Olivia Brown. <laughs> I am the youngest of three. I am 19. I attend Kennesaw State University, where I'm a student athlete, and I major in English education. And... Yeah. Is that secondary education, English education? Um, right now, I'm just kind of undecided on which one I want to do. Okay, we're going to delve in. Grief, um, as we both know, is real and measurable. Although I haven't experienced the loss of a parent, I empathize with you and understand that losing a parent changes you forever. The death of a parent is among the most emotionally difficult and universal of human experiences. If a person doesn't know what it's like to suffer the loss of a father or the loss of a mother, they most certainly will one day. It is understandable that the loss of a parent is bound to happen. But the foreknowledge doesn't make it any easier to accept it when it happens. How would you describe your daddy? Mm-hmm. Quiet, very, very quiet. Um, I would say, ooh, um, I would say humble, humble at times. He's very humble about things. Um, very driven. Um, hardworking, very hardworking, like work, 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 work. Um, a provider and yeah, that's, that's really, that's how I would, you know, describe him. (laughs) I know that you and your daddy, Reginald, had a special relationship. Um, because dad is the first man a girl would ever love. He is the first man who was there to catch her when she started to fall. Like when he saw you teeter tottering when you began to walk, walk, <laughs> actually run, walk, run. Um, he's the first man to wipe her tears away when she's afraid or hurt. The first man, you know, to tell her that she's beautiful and how special he is. Um, that sets a precedent for any man who walks into her life. To a girl, dad is invincible. What is your favorite memory of Reginald, of your daddy? Oh, it's so much. Um, but tell us I would, a few. <laughs> um, I would say probably the late night walks around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Waking up like on early Saturday morning, going to get Matt Griddle and eating them in the car <laughs> before we got in the house. Um. <laughs> oh, so y'all was hiding. Y'all were eating before y'all get to meet. Oh, okay, I understand. <laughs> Basically, um, also, well, we like every Monday night we just watch wrestling. So it was powder donuts and wrestling, and and like me running up the stairs like as fast as I can. And him counting. <laughs> and he following as usual. I know um, that these may seem like insignificant or silly questions, but I'm going to ask you, do you remember your daddy's favorite color? Ooh, I have, I have these grief chips, and I think I wrote it on one of these chips right here. And I went to camp. Mm-hmm. 
Your Greek mm-hmm. tip. Explain the Greek tip. Um, we have grief tips from when I went to camp, when I went to grief camp. Um, they basically, so the chips are made out of bottle tops, like melted bottle tops, and then they just, you know, harden and glass and stuff. So you write down your favorite memory, which one of them was just, you know, eating donuts, and then how was you know, life before the person passed. It was just, like, playful, happy. And then how was that person? Like, like how would you describe that person? It was, I put down hard work and determined to make things happen. And then the person's favorite food, I put turkey legs. And then favorite color, I put royal blue, but I think that's mama's. <laughs> Yes, royal blue is my color, but if I'm not mistaken, it was black and navy blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, was, it was one of the blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a navy blue. Some ivory and some linen. And then <laughs> yeah. it was, how did you feel after the person passed? Um, mm-hmm. The chip, I put peaceful, relaxed, and then angry. And then it was just those five chips. Okay. Describe the type of music he listened to. What type of music did he listen to? Oh, I, I honestly, <laughs> um, I would well, we know he did like. He he could not stand Jay Z. He could not stand it. Um, <laughs> I could even tell you what kind of music because. If something came on, he would attempt to sing, and it would just be like a chicken, like calling out for help. That's what it sound like. So it was just like anything that came on the radio, he was making up stuff. So <laughs> it was like a hit or miss. Okay. Um. Oh God, that is so funny. Um. Um, did he have a signature or favorite thing? What you mean? What was one of the favorite things that he would say? Did he have anything that he would say all the time? Ooh, um, <laughs> um, I know he called me Pooh Bear. He always called me Pooh Bear. Um, that's a term of endearment. Mm-hmm. He would say, um, um, well, he called you my old lady. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. You remember him uh, calling me his old lady, and I could Yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember what he would always say on the phone. He, oh, my gosh. It was it was I don't know, it was a whole bunch. She just always it was a whole it was a it was a real me. thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. You were the one that actually made him talk. The other two had his personality, so you engaged him a lot. Um mm-hmm. tell me how did your daddy impact your life? As in before? Um, before the diagnosis and yeah, before just talk about it before. Before I would say I would say I would say stable, like like you and daddy was like stable, like y'all were basically like one person basically, so it was it was just like a whole little unit. <laughs> so I the was, stability, the family stability. Yeah, it's like a little unit. So, um, I would just say it's just just stable. Like, um, life is just stable. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what did you call him? Did you have any nicknames or any terms of endearment for him? Because I know he had one for you, and his favorite nickname for you was Pooh Bear. Come here, Pooh Bear. 
Um, I used to, <laughs> I used to call him um, Reginova. Right. I say Reginova, <laughs> or um, Uptown Reg Brown, which was a nickname from Live Oak Park on the east side of Savannah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, it's kind of like daddy or something. But I just, Let me ask you, you this. Know. Is there a particular lesson you learned from his death? Mm, I would say you got to get it out of the mud. That's what I would say. I mean, you, like, I wouldn't say life goes on. Well, it, it does, but some things you just got to take. And that 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 has to be fueled to the fire. Like you 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 gotta keep going. So, Jay, explain that to me. Explain that to us, rather. I would say give us an example. Like when we running track. So mm-hmm. I had, I started running track in sixth grade only because I saw my brother, you know, getting. Getting attention, he was playing basketball down at IMG, you know, y'all going to see him and, and him playing stuff. I'm like, I want a little attention. Okay. So, you know, Joy transferred to UMKC and he was flying out to go see him up there. Okay, cool. So then that's when eighth grade hit. And then, you know, he was diagnosed in, like, in the summer and then came out to school and I was still running. And then actually, the week he died, that Wednesday, I had track, well, that Wednesday he died, and then that Friday, I had regions at track meet. And then, after that, I went to ninth grade, I really wasn't, you know, deep into track. I was, I was fast, but I wasn't, you know, like, fast as I am now, and I, and like, you know, as, as focused and concentrated on that concentrated on it as I am right now. So after he passed, it was like I wouldn't say track was like, you know, my only way at college, but it was like like, you know, why 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 would I put a financial burden on my mama when I got this talent that I can, you know, go to school off my talent and off my studies. You know, but just just go to school. I, I mean, after that, I mean, that kind of just fueled me, basically. Like, I wouldn't say that that has molded me or shaped me into the athlete that, well, the student athlete that I am right now, but it it, it, it has had, you know, it's, it's big, you know, effect or, you know, take on it, but... I just feel, I just, I just, I just feel me, like, I don't know, like, I, <laughs> it's just, I guess, I guess because I'm, I'm, like, such an athlete to the point where it's, it's like, oh, okay, all right, like, you know, if somebody, like, you know, trying to get to you, I wouldn't say his stuff got to me, well, it did, but I wouldn't say it's, like, you know, like, on me, on me like that, because I've, you know, come to terms with it, but it's, it just it just fueled me like it 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 keep me going. So in other words, you're you're telling us and you're letting us know that although this happened to me, I didn't let it stop fueling the gift that God gave me. Basically, it 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 made me want to horn in, you know, and like focus more on it. So mm-hmm. because I mean, he he had never, you know came to attract me. I mean, he, he, he came to my trick competition and stuff, but he had never seen me, you know, run because I wasn't taking it, you know, serious. So it was like, and my daddy couldn't see me run. Everybody going to see me run. So y'all be on the lookout for me in the Olympics sooner or later. But everybody going to see me run. Um, these, the question I'm going to ask you now um, is it's going to elicit memories about, you know, about your daddy. What is a particular time you recall um, that Reginald was especially joyful? I can recall one, but I want to hear from you. 
joyful. Mm-hmm. It's, remember mm-hmm. that I said especially joyful. I want to say either when Kiki was having Kima and Jade. Exactly. I was getting ready to say that. <laughs> That's when it was, when he found out Kiki was having them kids. Yep, he was especially joyful about his grandbaby, Bubby and Bebop, his pet names. Um, what was his laugh like? Somebody, somebody trying to get air. It was like he was wheezing. It was, ah, 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 like, <laughs> it was it was weird. Like it wasn't weird. It's just like a like if he was real real tickled. He was gone. Like it was, he was, he was out of there. Happy. It was like he was trying to get hell. It was like <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask my dad. <laughs> um, let me ask you this, and I want you to go into detail about it. Were there any major t- changes um, to his life that affected him in a big way after his diagnosis? After his cancer diagnosis. He started going to church more. Mm-hmm. I went to church more. He was a little more... I mean, he was always loving, but, you know, men in general have, you know, their different ways of loving what well, well, all men do. But he, But he was just so, like, I gotta get this. I gotta do that. It's like, it's like his 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 way of loving was, you know, providing, make sure we had this and that, make sure we, you know, didn't have to, you know, want for nothing. So he was a little more open and loving. I would say vocally, he was he would you know tell or whatever. I remember one time. I think this was like, well I, well, I feel like y'all had already knew he had, well, y'all, well, y'all did. Y'all knew he had cancer, but I think, I think this was like before y'all told me. I want to say I was either packing or something. I, I was packing to go to Virginia, West Virginia. And okay. Was, um, well, go ahead and finish because the, you were on your way to Virginia. As a matter of fact, he had a doctor's appointment that Friday. And you all left to go. And we found out that Friday because I called Cindy and I told her not to tell you because I did not want you to. Um, I wanted you to enjoy, um, you know, Patton, West Virginia. I wanted you to, to, to have a great time with your, you know, with your other family in West Virginia. I asked her, I said, please don't tell Olivia that Reginald had stage four pancreatic cancer. We will tell her when she comes back. You know, and as a family, you know, on a concerted effort, um, we decided that we wouldn't tell you anything until that Monday. And you came back, I think that Sunday, but I don't think we told you until that Monday because I had to get myself together. We I was all gone for like a together. week and a half. I was gone for like almost two yeah. weeks. Yeah, we were gone for like two weeks. We didn't tell you until about everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I'm, I, I apologize like, for any of my things. Are you good? I just feel like, well, well, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't know he had cancer by then, but I think I was like packing or something, and he was like, "Pull, come out the side door." So I was blocking the side door, and like you know how just you know things just happen, and you know how the spirit moves and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. he was like, you know, unlocking that little Corolla, and so um, I was like, "Bye," because he was leaving for work. I was like, "Bye." He was like. He was like, bye, I love you. And I was like, like, that was the first time like, I can remember him, like, you know, actually saying, like, he loved me, whatever, like that. Mm-hmm. That's, like, one of the first mm-hmm. times I feel like, you know, actually remember. Hearing yeah, like, the word, like, actually, I love yeah, you. I, yeah, yeah, like, like, asking him, like, you know, say, I love you, whatever, but. If you knew he could drop by and visit tomorrow, what would your ideal day be? together look like oh i'm breaking out the john cena gear you can't see me i'm, I'm popping out the pot of donuts 
I'm, I'm freaking out the jump rope. <laughs> I'm freaking out the bicycle he got me for Christmas. And we're going to walk my neighborhood. And the ice cream he used to steal. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he can have his little strawberry ice cream. I know you said um, you mentioned about being um, angry. Um, tell us about that 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 emotion, that feeling. Mm. Why were you angry? Cause like like um I mean like like me and you we. We we are close, but I was I feel like I was closer to Daddy out of like all the kids. I was I was way closer to him out of all the kids, and so it was like I don't know. I was like the other two kids. I mean, they got Mama, not me, Mama here, but I'm just like my person gone. Well. You say your person is gone. Would you say your person is gone because of the fact that you were more the most engaging of the children? You know, you could get him to do silly things, but, but you know, as um, opposed to the other two, like I stated before, having similar personalities that you know as he did. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you 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 just view as a, as as a disciplinarian, so it was like. <laughs> If you get I'm the disciplinarian. What are you, you saying? something off the wall. But, I mean, <laughs> I guess because... I, I guess because Jordan was in those stages where, like, he, like, you know, needed you and stuff. Like, you know, getting her ready for the college, Houston High School, you know, SAT, ACT, such that, you know... All of that, it was like Jordan basketball scrimmage, whatever, whatever. Me and Daddy look at each other, like okay. And then I could, I could get him to like you know do more, like oh, Daddy, let's go do this. Daddy, let's do this. Let's let's go with Walmart for fun. He'd be so mad. Live here, why be in here? I don't know. So. That's what I mean by like my person. Mhm. Did you feel any shock? Were you in shock or numbness? Um, any? Did you experience um, emotional denial or sadness? I know you experienced the sadness. I know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. I would say to this day, a part of me is still like you know in denial. Like I still talk about him as if he's still present. So like, mm-hmm. like my teammates and my friends, they like talk about their parents. And I'm like, oh well, my dad did it, did it, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. But like, they, they don't, they don't know he like, you know, deceased until they go like, on my Instagram or unless I tell them. But right. I'm still talking about it as if he's still here. Like the other day, he was in a car. It was like me, and we, Ariana, Jarrah. We just was just in the car. And I, I forgot where, where we were going. I think we were going somewhere dealing with track. And we were just talking about our parents and stuff. And, and that was that. And then I was in the car with my other friend, Kiani, yesterday. We went to go get some wings. We Because we had to go get those wings. Mm. And this year so. So um, we were just like, in the car talking about our parents. And I was talking to him. I was you know talking to my daddy as if he was still here. But, but but of course Kiani knows like you know Daddy's not here but I was I I still have my moments where it's like it's like no nah, he ain't gone like <laughs> I made the joke to one of my coworkers one day I said um I said you know when I'm up here in the produce section I just like you know looking at everybody come in I'm like. Man, what am I that just popping like just out of the blue? I'm be so shook. I'm be like, all these years you playing tricks on us. 
but I still and you know, a little denial here and there. Ma. Hello, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I was stating that um, on Wednesday, like, I understand when you're saying, like, being in denial. Um, I have accepted that reality that, you know, Reginald is no longer here. But however, those feelings, like, you're experiencing those emotions, you know, at times, like, on Wednesday, like, I still anticipate going to lunch. On, on Wednesday, or, or going to breakfast, and then come the weekend. Weekend comes, I'm anticipating, you know, a movie, but then, you know, it, it hits me. I can't go to a movie like that with him, but I can go by myself. I can, you know, I can do that by myself. How will you honor um, Reginald's memory? Mm. And what way do you think you can honor his memory? Ooh. Mm. I would say I mean I'm an athlete. Everybody know I everybody know I'm an athlete, I'm an athlete, like my like, track is where is like where where my heart is at. So I mean I'm I'm making big. I'm 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 going pro. So just So you're gonna athlete. honor his memory. By going to the next level in track and field. Yeah, I mean, it's all in my last name. I mean, you can't Olivia Brown. It's just slow. All right. Nobody can be Olivia Brown but Olivia Brown. What do you wish you had said to him before he died? Mm. I would say honestly I I, I really I really wouldn't say Just be honest. <clears throat> nothing because that night I walked out of the room and I mean I know I I remember that day so clear because that Tuesday it was St. Patrick's Day. And I asked, mm-hmm. I said, oh, mama, can I go to our town with Megan? And you said, no, mm-hmm. you need to stay home. And that's when I kind of sent something was off. And he was on that, on the breathing, on the little on breathing machine. And then I want to say, like, that Tuesday night. Um, I think he was either upstairs or something. You was upstairs, but I went in the room. Uh, I was just like you know, always, always playing, joking around, you know, trying to lighten up the mood. And I remember telling, I was like, um, I was like, my last words to him was, "I got you, like, I got you." So I thought like that was that was it, like that said enough right there. I just, I looked at him, you know, I smiled. Oh, I had braces. <laughs> I <laughs> smiled. I was teasing. I smiled. And I said, I got you, old man. If you had any unfinished business, for example, your dreams or, or talks, how have you been able to resolve them emotionally and mentally? Hmm. Can you? Can you um, repeat the question again, Mom? If you had unfinished business, for example, your dreams or talks you wish you had with him, how have you been able to resolve them emotionally and mentally to date? Mm.
Okay, you okay? You said today, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm go back from when he first passed. I remember it was at Chisport, and and Chisport was very emotional because that was like one of the biggest competitions. Like Chisport is huge, and that was like one of the first competitions. Where I was at, you know, level five that Daddy had came to before he passed. So he came to Chisport in Atlanta. My my eighth grade year, level five TUC, and then the following year we came back to Chisport in Atlanta, and it was me, you, Grandma, and I was in the warm room, and I just went. Blank, like I didn't know where I was, no nothing. And then I had a teammate named Savannah. She came up to me, and she was the only person I let call me Pooh because she was there throughout the whole entire thing. And she came up to me, and she said, "Come on, Pooh Um. And I boohoo cried. Like, I was back there, like, bawling my eyes out, like, makeup crazy. And, and luckily, I had a coach who who understood. And the whole TUC family was just very supportive. And I just remember, like, that, that whole entire weekend, I was just, like, out of it. But when it came to the last day to compete that Sunday, I was killing and I was just like I was I was I was in the zone and I had to mentally I wouldn't say fight but I well yeah, I had to mentally fight through that because physically I I I know my routine, I know my step, I know everything I'm supposed to do. But mentally that is where I had to fight because it's it's always going to be mind over matter. That's when I had to fight the most. And then recently, my freshman year of college, um, my conference for indoor track and field conference um, in Virginia, um, the night before conference, it was that that Friday night. Well, we we had ran that Friday because we were up there since like Wednesday. We ran that Friday, and I was you know feeling good. I was seated good, but and it was close. So you know, Daddy's update, and I just I just Google cried. Like I just I don't I just cried because it's like. Here it is, something that I am excelling at, and he can't see me, you know, at my best. And I cry myself to sleep at night, and then that morning, I woke up, boo, crying. I called Kiki. I was just crying, crying, crying. But I just know he's always with me. Like, he just, he's always with me. And, like, even when, like, I'm, like, traveling and come back to school, he be in the passenger seat. I be talking to him. I be talking about what's going on. I be like, yo, like, this class is blowing. It was real good at math. So I was like, I don't need you in this math class. <laughs> but I just talk. I just talk to him like as, as if he hears. So I really, I, I really be walking around like, Dad, do you see this? Like, do you see what's going on? That's really hard to deal with things. In closing, what would 19-year-old Olivia say to 13-year-old Olivia about her day's death and living for it? Mm -hmm. I would definitely tell her, like, Don't bottle it up because 
because when I get under like a lot of pressure or I'm stressed out and I want to go talk to him and I can't, it's, it's just a lot. Like, don't, I would try to keep pushing. Like, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot, but everything happens for a reason. Personally, I feel like I'm just, I feel like throughout all of this, I feel like I mm-hmm. I, I have made the best of it. So, oh, tell me, she's going to be straight. She's going to be good. She's going to be Gucci. So you she would tell her to keep, keep focused, to stay focused, to persevere. And to keep yeah, God first and foremost. I would tell her that and always be on her P's and Q's. And and and, and just all and just and to continue to stay on her ground and and I wouldn't say speak her mind but stand up for what she believes in and make her point. And let it be known. That's what I would tell her. Well, I thank you, Olivia, for being my special guest tonight on Pearl with Veronica, speaking from my daughter's a daughter's heart on grief and loss. As always, I always end with a prayer. And this prayer is gonna be about healing and comfort. God, you send comfort to us in the breath of the wind that touches our face, in the warmth of the sun breaking through the clouds, in the voices of the crickets and bullfrogs that sing us to sleep at night, in simple reminders, assure us of your presence. Amen. Thank you for joining and tuning in to Pearls with Veronica on Positive Radio 21. Positive Power 21 Christian Media. I am. I have been your host for tonight, Veronica Brown. Special guest, Olivia Brown. Thank you and good night. You are listening to Girls Live Worldwide Podcast. Did you know that internet radio and television can help bring worldwide awareness to your business? During this current season, the number of businesses that are conducting business from home are increasing. Also, many of us are staying home these days, and many actually prefer to shop from home. Positive Power 21 produces positive, faith-based programming that is seen around the world. Around the world on platforms such as WATC TV 57 in Atlanta, Roku, Hulu, Truly TV, Jenico Faith Based TV, DeKalb 25 in DeKalb County, Georgia, and YouTube. Now that all adds up to a global reach of over 20 million households. Positive Power 21 has radio and television underwriting opportunities available that can assist you in gaining worldwide exposure for your business, product, or service. Opportunities that will tailor to any budget and will provide you with the opportunity to market your business, product, or service indefinitely. Interested? Email jerryvoicelive at gmail.com or paula at paulagvoice.com for more information. Yes, welcome back. Yeah. Woohoo. We, we are back. Are excited to be with you all another Tuesday. Yes, and it's the Jerry Royce. Live, Positive Power 21. 21 family. We just want yeah. to give a shout out to him. And hey, guys. Positive Power 21 family. Shout oh, yeah. out to Paula Bree on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, who are we? Who Mr. Are we? and Mrs. Devil Slayer. Devil Slayer. And, and if you tuned in last broadcast, we went into a deep discussion on the foundation of who we are and the significance of what Devil Slayer means. So, if you didn't get a chance to listen in, definitely go back and tune in. Yeah, and we're, this is called the love chapter. From now on, 
It's going to be the love chapter. All about love, guys. Yeah. All about love. So yeah. get ready, get yeah. ready, and get ready in the words of T.G. Jakes. L-O-V-E. And what is love all about? Yeah. What's love got to do? Got <laughs> it's got to do everything it. to do with it, actually. Well, what is, what is, what is love? Love is the very foundation of it's the very foundation of who we are as believers. You know, I like the way Pastor Creflo Dollar describes it. It's yeah. our rod, and everything rod. else hangs from this rod. Or a banner. No, a rod. Mm-hmm. Like a rod. You know, okay. like a shower curtain rod. Oh, okay. Yeah. Everything or, else hangs from the rod. Or or like a banner because because that's something the banner